Salmon are an important part of BC's society. They support the ecosystem by providing food to bears, orca whales, and eagles, as well as spreading nutrients from salt water to fresh waters that is crucial to the health and sustainability of our lakes, rivers, and ponds. They support our eco economy as well by providing over $500 million to BC each year and supporting more than 6,000 workers. There are few animals in BC with the same cultural importance as salmon, and unfortunately, they are under attack. Salmon farmers have been waging war on tiny parasites called sea lice since 1994. With the use of parasiticides that are harmless to the salmon and lethal to the sea lice, salmon farmers have been effectively keeping the sea lice populations at bay until about 2009 when the sea lice started fighting back. The sea lice have been evolving a resistance to the parasiticides, much like bacteria are evolving resistance to modern antibiotics. Sea lice have been plaguing salmon for as long as salmon have been around, but the unnaturally high concentration of sea lice in the salmon farms can be lethal, especially for the young salmon. This all seems pretty dire. If we can't find a way to eradicate these pesky parasites, salmon may soon become endangered. So what exactly is being done to maintain the salmon populations worldwide? Many salmon farmers have been forced to think outside of the box to come up with ways to protect the salmon from the sea lice without harming the salmon. They've been looking at different mechanical methods that like physically remove the lice from the fish. So I think there's something like that they suck them all into like some sort of fat or something and then get mechanically scraped off or they suck them all into some container, put them in fresh water. The salmon can stand that, um, but the sea lice fall off. And there are many other non-chemical ways too. Things like sudden temperature changes, which kills the sea lice, using lasers that fry the sea lice but bounce off the shiny scales of salmon, or by installing a filter that surrounds the top few meters of the farm which stops the sea lice from entering because they only swim a few meters below the surface of the water. While these methods are more effective than using chemicals, they are not perfect. They are either too expensive, inefficient, or just too risky to the fish. There are other methods as well currently being researched such as an ultrasound technology that vibrates the water in a way that kills the sea lice but is harmless to the fish. But once we're able to regain control of the sea lice epidemic, what then? Will they further evolve into super lice that can survive these mechanical methods, forcing newer and more expensive ideas? The thing with evolution is that it's very good at surviving. Mayan Kreitzman created a model in her paper that in theory could show the evolution of sea lice. So we're suggesting that the, that the fact that there aren't any wild salmon populations to serve as an evolutionary refuge has accelerated the evolution of resistance, and that's why we see it there. Her model showed that having a higher population of wild salmon, and therefore a higher population of wild sea lice, can dilute and slow the evolution of sea lice that live in salmon farms. The same concept could also one day be applied to viruses and diseases that are becoming resistant to our modern medicine like bacteria to antibiotics. But first we need to focus on ways to eliminate the sea lice from the salmon farms so that we can continue to enjoy our beautiful salmon for generations to come.